everybody. Welcome to Wingman's Hangar, episode 29. It's been an incredible ride so far, and it's just going to keep chugging along. We've had a huge week this week. We're changing the format a little bit. We're going we're gonna to change the focus, and you guys let us know what you think, what you like, what you didn't like, you know, as you usually do. If you're new to the show, and we have a lot of new members after the live stream, then this is kind of a little inside look at everything Cloud Imperium Games, a little inside look with the dev team. We've had a lot going on this week. Chris is in town, as you'll soon see in a little bit. Sandy's in town, as you'll soon see in a little bit. Um, and we've hired two new people. Joshua Alway started, Jeffrey Zhu started. Uh, actually three, and Alexi started too in customer service. So we've had a really, really busy week. We've also, by the way, and this is hot off the presses, we found a new office space. More about that coming up. We, we narrowed that down to two. Um, we chose one, and so now we're in negotiations. We'll see what you think. We'll bring you along for the ride, and you guys will get to see it every step of the way. We're pretty excited about it, you know, so um, hopefully you will be too. And it's because we hit that $11 million stretch goal, and we got, you know, the wingman out of the basement. So this week is going to be coming up this week. We have, oh, by the way, this month has been amazing. We got 30,000 Boom! New pledgers. 30,000. Did you know if you take from June to like the beginning of July, like the 30 days in there, that we would be the second biggest crowdfunded game ever? You guys are amazing. We're extremely we're thankful. I mean, it's crazy. It, it blows us away every time. And we, we still think we have more work to do. So we're considering doing another promotion that, or another event that, uh, that allows people to go out there and recruit others and, and have some giveaways for that because the more people that come and join uh, Star Citizen, the bigger the game's going to be as far as there's more people to play against, more people to play with, the more vibrant the economy's going to be, uh, more targets, more money to make, so it's all better. The, the, all better. Good English. The more folks that play, the better off we are as, as a community and as a, and a team. Um, well. As Mark Skelton would say, my weight. Let's take a look at my weight. We all know that I started at 236 pounds. I'd gotten all the way down to, there it is, 213 pounds before I went on my vacation. The day I landed, I was at, uh, yeah. <laughs> 220! I don't know what happened. I think, you know, the meal plan, having to eat an appetizer or dessert anyway. So it's been two weeks. Uh, since then, I jumped right back on the diet, and now here's where I am. 214! Right back to where I was. The other one was actually 213.5, so I'm right in the ballpark. I'm heading back down. And By the way, there are other people here in the office who have joined me on the, uh, on the diet. Uh, Mr. Ben Lisnick and Alexi have both joined in the low-carb deal, and they're going through the three days of carb starvation and they're going to jump on it with me so it's going to be kind of fun and, and all the people out there that have sent PMs and messages I really appreciate it and you guys keep it up too we'll do this together just like, just like making the game we'll do this all together um, I just mentioned we did get a new space or we're looking at a new space we found a perfect space uh, I don't want to give too much away because negotiations happen and it might fall through and I, I really hope it doesn't because it's beautiful and I think people here will really like it and it's going to be great for visitations and whatever else we do together as a community. Um, we had the mocap session with Brian Brewer this week. You know, the first use of our mocap, which you guys got for us at, at 11 million or 12 million. So, or 10 million, that was a 10 million thing. So take it away, check this out. Hi, I'm Brian Brewer. I'm a uh, lead animator here at Cloud Imperium. And today we are doing our first motion capture shoot. And we're basically capturing every animation that you're going to be seeing in our, our first hangar module release. Uh, so on this shoot, I'm actually going to be technical director. I'm making sure our actor's hitting his marks, uh, that his feet are in the right place. My name is Chris Olivia, and I'm the chief visual officer. And I am here to direct the performance of the motion capture shoot. Um, I'm just making sure that the performances uh, feel natural and sort of fit in the story of the game. So. My name is Rob Franco, and I am here jumping around, shooting guns, crawling in spaceships. I'm basically the, uh, the body of the character that uh, is going to be played. I've been trained in uh, martial arts my entire life. I compete in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I box, I used to teach Wing Chun Kung Fu, so it's, this is fun. And also the eight-year-old me loves that I'm running around with a machine gun in 3D, so yeah, it's great. My name's Daniel Craig and I uh, was brought in by Brian Brewer to uh, run the Opti track system with him. We had Gus here from Natural Point and he was doing a, 
a really good job showing us all the ropes and now we're on our own so we'll, we'll figure it out but uh, so far so good. So far we haven't run into too many challenges. A lot of it is very intuitive, that's what I like about the system so far. I mean I've experienced in other motion capture software and so far this is the easiest I've ever worked with. Yeah, we're, this is our first uh, test case in the motion capture system that we bought thanks to everyone out there which is amazing and it's going to be a great workflow test. Over time this is going to evolve, we're actually going to add more cameras to the system and it will be where we'll do a lot of performance capture so we'll have a rig on the face, it'll be capturing actually the actor's performance as well as the body motion. Right now we're just doing body motion. So it's great, it's great to sort of see the team put this in action, it's really nice to uh, see the software sort of and the hardware delivering what was promised, which is sort of a really simple workflow. Um, so I'm just sort of looking forward to sort of really being able to say, okay, let's have a special little character animation here. Just add a lot more detail to all the scenes. Like typically, if you look at most games, they only have you know basic motion sets because it's a pain to capture them all. It's pain to store them all, especially on the old consoles where you didn't have as much memory. So now we're on PC, we're sort of going for a very high memory, like I think our minimum is going to be 8 gigs. Um, so we can have a lot more motion, a lot more detail, and so having a system that can capture that enough fidelity for us is, 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 is great. Wow, that was really cool, wasn't it? Awesome. I mean, that's incredible, and it's all yeah. thanks to the people out there that um, yeah, totally that have helped us out and get that, and, and it's going to allow us to make Star Citizen that much better. So everybody, look who's here. John Erskine's here. Hey, how's it going, guys? We want to talk about, you know, you were really involved in the website and the launch and all that kind of stuff. And Very much. We've got a few new uh, people at... Yeah. Um, you know, and since we started the 300i promotion, we've actually brought in over 30,000 new fans. 30,000 new pledgers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right. Not even just fans, but right. people who've made a financial financial pledge. Yeah, which is great. And the, the more people that are on the site playing, the, the, the deeper the game gets itself. So that's got to present some challenges with the website. How's the website handling all the new people and, and things of that nature? And what, we have, what do we have coming up? Well, it's great. You know, when we started the live stream, right after you pushed that red button, we had some problems. <laughs> I didn't push uh, it, Zane pushed it. That's right, Zane pushed it. Right, 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 right. And uh, we had a, just an incredible amount of load on the site as yeah. everybody was refreshing the page, loading the images, migrating their accounts. It took us about an hour. We added a lot more capacity to the website uh, on the back end servers, mm -hmm. which is actually something we can do on the new site that we couldn't do on the old site. Right, so we can scale. That's a big deal. So it took us about an hour to get up to the amount of hardware for the load. Which was what? What, 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 what did we plan for? So we had, uh, it's all technical stuff, right? But on the back end, we had eight web servers at launch. And based on the loads that we saw on the old site, we thought that was more than we would ever need, right? <laughs> and what we ended up needing was about 20. 20. So the demand was far exceeded even our expectations. Um, the... After, after we got that worked out, it took us about an hour to roll up those additional servers. Everything has been smooth as silk ever since. Yeah, and, and it's not done. The website's got a lot more coming up. We've got... That's right. Uh, so the, particularly the forums are going to get a lot better. There's going to be a lot more feature-rich stuff coming there. Well, well, just tell them what, what's, what we're going to be doing. So this week we've had very intensive uh, planning meetings all week long with the team here in Austin from the design side, from our web team mm -hmm. uh, at Turbulent. Mm -hmm. And we have been working on two different phases. We're going to make some very immediate changes to the website right. that you'll start seeing in the next week, two weeks, three weeks. We've got about eight to nine weeks of changes that we're going to roll out. You're going to see these things coming out on a regular basis. Good. There's going to be some uh, some feature enhancements for the uh, forums that a lot of people have asked about. Right. There's going to be some feature enhancements on the site to mm -hmm. make things a little easier to navigate that some people have talked about. That stuff's all going to be really cool. We've also been and looking... They're helping us out with their... The, the feedback we're getting is great. It helps us get better at what we're doing. It, the feedback we've received has been fantastic. We're listening to all the feedback that we get. We're reading the forums. We're looking at all that sort of stuff. We're also looking at feedback that we find on other sites like Reddit and mm -hmm. other places where mm -hmm. there are really active sub-communities. So we're looking for all the feedback. We've taken it and you know to heart. And we've got some changes we're going to make really soon. Mm -hmm. We've also been looking at the longer term of what we want to do with the site once we get farther down the road. Mm -hmm. We have some really ambitious plans, and it's a little too early to start sharing those plans. Sure, but sure. we are going to have some cool stuff to share later this fall, mm -hmm. and we'll start seeing some more of that stuff come out. So the website is really exciting. 
the word I would use is ambitious. We have a Good. lot, a lot of plans about things we can do that'll be really cool. Well, speaking of ambitious, uh, you just had a baby. I know it. That's pretty. Well, uh, you, you, your wife had the baby. My wife had the baby. Yep, yeah. Yep, so fair. right, the, right before, about a week before the site launch, we had a we had a new <laughs> a new addition to our family. So. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been some sleepless nights, but it's been good. It's been sleepless nights at work and at home. That's right, so, all the way around. Yeah, so, <laughs> so coffee is your friend. Coffee is definitely my friend. So keep sending those beans. <laughs> keep sending those beans. Yeah, fair enough, definitely. fair enough. So, you know, Turbulence in Town, and we'll see a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, our own Sandy's going to interview them and talk Great. to them a little bit. Um, we're going to interview some of the key guys there. And also this week we had NVIDIA in town. You know, we're looking at partners like that, graphical partners and things and how we can make our visual effects a little better, uh, taking advantage of some of the things they have on their cards. Um, can't really talk a lot about it because it's, it's NDA, but look for some future stuff from us on NVIDIA and Star Citizen. And now, ta-da! Hey, everyone. How Guess who's doing? here? There you go. So the forum feedback is always much better when, when you get involved. So we've got a lot. We've got a big, heavy forum feedback for you today. Or should we just say the f -f forum feedback, or should we just leave it as a forum <laughs> feedback? I guess I just did, didn't I? So we'll start with Daniel. Daniel says, regarding colonization, if an explorer discovers and successfully navigates a jump point, what will happen to the planets in the newly discovered system? Will certain colonization missions appear? Uh, well, so it depends on the system because there's multiple, like sometimes a jump point will actually just be a new way into an existing system, which obviously you won't be colonizing. Sometimes a jump point will be into a system that already has... Uh, you know, a different race there, like a Jean or a Banu or a Tavarian or a Vandal or potentially some other race. Uh, and then also there will be a case where maybe it's a, a new system that hasn't necessarily been discovered by uh, humanity or anyone else. And then in those cases, that would probably start spawning some colonization style missions, you know, to bring equipment into Terraform, to bring uh, personnel into work on the planet and all that kind of stuff. So that would feed into sort of the expanding economy that we would have. And there would be missions to mine raw resources that you would discover. And perhaps if you're an explorer, you could go and chart the different planets or areas out in the outer reaches where you'd find an asteroid field or some other uh, resource um, that you could uh, potentially exploit. There you go. Uh, there you go. That's a good answer. From Green Eyed Devil. Those under the Ghost Cartel's financial influence frequently find themselves in precarious situations where prolonged life expectancies can sometimes be minimalized. Will we be able to take out life insurance policies on our hired help? All right. Okay. Well, that's uh, kind of cool. Um, so, life insurance for hired help. Um, I mean, not so much. I think that's part of, uh, if we're talking about NPCs that you would hire, that's the risk they're taking. They go work out in the big, bold universe uh, and uh, bite the bullet, then they're dead. <laughs> you better hire another one. Um, and then obviously if it's another player coming to do some uh, help you out that you've hired, then again, that's the risk uh, they would take. So I don't think you would purchase life insurance for um, um, uh, your hired help, and I would suspect that... Uh, that would be ripe for exploiting. Like, oh, why don't I hire you as life insurance policy and I'll cash it in after me and my uh, friends have jumped you off in the outer reaches of space. Uh, so no, there won't be life insurance. Floating for baggies. Help. All right, from Merkin, he says, we'll be able to hail other ships using our webcam. Uh, so that's a good one. So mm -hmm. we're actually looking at uh, the technology uh, that's kind of along those lines, but what, what we're hoping to do is have the webcam on you and you talk and we actually track your face onto your avatar and then the player on the other side that's playing it sees your avatar pop up and you hear, say, my voice and the lips are moving in sync with what I I'm see. saying, but it's, the, but it's actually the in-game avatar because that's obviously, I think, much more immersive. So that's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're shooting for. That's that's a pretty big deal. We've been sitting on that one for a while, so that's that's some big breaking news right there. And it looks right now it's early days, but it looks pretty neat. From Malkara, are there any plans to implement a fast travel that would enable players to easily and quickly transport to friends guild ships that have multi-person crews? Uh, okay, so uh, well, I mean, I, it depends on uh, what we're talking about on fast travel. Um, I think they're thinking of jumping into the ship, right? Which it's kind of, I don't know how it breaks the immersion if you're like over in another system and your friends are being attacked ten systems over. Oh no, we're gonna we're going. There's a couple of things that we're gonna let you break the immersion on, where friends can drop in and they can drop in on okay. on your ship to man it as sort of crew. So if you had like an NPC crew that you had, a friend of yours could sort of take it over or cool. something to cool. to control it. Um, uh, 
but if you know they were bringing their ships and they were going to fly alongside you, they would have to fly from wherever they were on their ships. But certainly, we're going to let uh, you know, like you're flying your constellation. You say, hey, you guys want to fly with me? On board my constellation, uh, you're not necessarily going to have to like fly halfway across the galaxy right. to to help crew the constellation. Well, there you go. That's it's so it's sort of a compromise between like immersion and, and uh, gameplay. And gameplay. Right. Right. From Lord Sagan, will turreted guns controlled by players have an auto gyro feature that stabilizes them as the ship rotates? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would. I, I would. Ass so. How smooth is that going to look for the person in the in the side chair if the guy's jerking around the front of the cockpit, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I guess it would depend on the targeting system on the ship. So if you were, if you had like a sort of targeting system, the, the turret moved to where you were looking, uh, then it would probably kind of do something like that. Uh, but if it's sort of a more old-fashioned turret, then you know, it would be just like the same thing as... You're a B-17 uh, gunner in the back, and the the pilot like does a barrel roll. Well, you know you you're gonna have to be altering your gun. You're not gonna have quite the same uh, targeting. So so I think it it mostly depends on sort of how you target, whether you're manually targeting or you're doing on your point of view. And um, so I would say probably not so much, but uh, you know it'll depend. I have to admit I'd like to see a B-17. Doing a barrel roll <laughs> at some point. That would well, be kind I of fun. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> from from M. Palman and Sarza. We are colonial movers and we move anywhere. Who's flying the ship? Oh, our new electronic agent in connection to the nav computer. Ema can fly. I hope so. Dear Wingman, can we in fact set our ship on autopilot towards mission objectives and walk casually around the ship ourselves? Is that a ice comet? Whoa! Oh! <laughs> We're crashing! I think I saw Mr. Robert sitting next to Wingman. Maybe I should have asked him about the range of escape pods. Shall I calculate the flight path to the nearest planet? She's flying the escape pods? Are you kidding me? That was awesome. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, yeah, I mean, I think you'll have to engage autopilot to go to a place, uh, and I, I, I guess we could set it so it could do it the slower, the fast way, but yeah. once autopilot's going, then you can uh, get up and walk around the ship just like a, you would, uh, like a modern uh, day um, uh, jetliner pilot. Although, as soon as someone comes out and starts attacking you, you probably want to get back into your seat or get to the turret. Um, so, uh, yes, potentially. All right. From Zave, uh, he says, will players aboard multi-person ships be able to attack other crew members and attempt to take the ship? Will they be unable to attack the crew as soon as they agree to come on board? <laughs> How safe is it if you, for your crew to attack so the I, I guess the, I guess the question is if people, uh, like, crew a ship and... Um, and pretend they're, like, nice and then they try and, like... Steal the ship. ...hijack the ship from you. Um, so, uh, I don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Uh, how necessarily that would work. I guess you could always insist that uh, your crew don't have any weapons on the ship, so that would make it kind of hard for them to, mm -hmm. to attack or steal it from you. Uh, but we really haven't sort of uh, gotten into that level of it yet, so that would probably be something that we would have to think about. I mean, I, I, I uh, think that there would be a, a sense of, uh, you know, there's definitely something that griefers could do in that situation, although we have a, uh, haven't fully discussed it yet, but there's a whole mechanic in the hiring of either NPCs or um, real players mm -hmm. that we're going to do, which is uh, going to be very similar to, um, uh, in Europe, you probably don't know about this, but some cities in America, there's, a, there's, a server, there's this thing called Uber, which you can actually... Uh, higher uh, black cars, limousines, or actually some smaller cars now, and it's on your iPad or iPhone, and you can, it can see where you are, and you can say, I need a car, and it says, oh, a car is 10 minutes away, and you can see where the car is, and you can see where you are. But the cool thing about it is, is um, when you hire a car, you rate the driver when you exit your um, uh, it's reputation. drive, and also the driver rates you. So like as you go and look for new drivers, both sides can like, oh, look, this guy's a five-star. Okay, I definitely want to take him as a fare. Or he's a one-star. No way, I'm not taking him. He's a pain in the ass. That's interesting. So uh, we're going to enact a uh, basically a, um, 
uh, a kind of rating system that both someone that gets hired or someone that hires can rate each other at the end of the, the job. And so essentially that's a way for the community itself to be able to, oh, well, this guy's, you know, he's a five-star mercenary, so he's pretty much done all the jobs he's won. Everyone's been satisfied. He's definitely worth hiring, and probably that person can charge more money. Whereas mm -hmm. if someone that's a griefer, that like, oh, I'm going to help you out, and then shows up and, and uh, has consistently griefed people, is obviously not going to get a high rating, and that would be someone that would... And maybe would, a bounty put on their would, head. Would, ...would stay away from. Yeah, and also it would show that whether that person uh, had bounties and stuff. So, so I think there will be systems that will sort of enable you to know uh, you know whether you're hiring good help, so to speak, um, whether it was NPC help or, or, or real player help. And this is another example of us putting that into the player's hands, right? We're letting yeah. them sort of drive that portion of the thing. They're going to be able to do that themselves. So, so from Rohar the Plunderer, how will instancing and factories work? Will there be same factory for all the sector instances? Or will there be an equivalent factory for every instance? Uh, no. So there's the, so the economy on factories is not instance at all. That's that's all persistent. All those nodes are persistent. The right. planet's persistent. Any shops that are on a planet, that's all persistent. Uh, the only instancing is a temporary thing, which is what we're handling in space to basically handle for the fact that you could have more players in one area of space than we could handle uh by just on the client side with you know the amount of ships you have to draw and also on the server side. Uh, but all the economy and resources is, uh, is persistent. It's not instance at all. Um, so I guess the answer would be no. <laughs> cool. From, from Tazon, based on the economy preview, another, another one which has been over, went over very well, missions are either gener generated by players or by game AI. Will all missions be public or will Star Citizen also allow organization internal private missions? Uh, so that's a good that's a good question, and the answer is that it's going to have both. So there there it depends on the kind of mission. Um, so some missions uh, basically some missions can be specified or filtered for the various organizations. Like this mission would be only for people in the Merchants Guild, or this mm. mission would be only for people in the Mercenaries Guild, or you could have missions that could only be in player-run organizations. So we'll be unveiling and talking about some of the stuff we're going to do for organizations that uh -huh. I think everyone's going to be really uh, excited by, uh, uh, which neat. we're going to deploy both on our website and obviously in the game later on. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, uh, the, the, you'll have the, the ability. The game itself and other players will have the ability to specify, um, you know, who can take this mission. So you can filter it and say, I only want it for people of this guild. That's a player-run guild. If you want, um, the game itself will, you know, may not be so specific on that level, but players can be. The game itself could say, okay, well, this would only be for people in the merchants guild. This would only. This could be for everybody. Um, so it's a combination. Cool. From Razor Xerox, it's time for a video. Hi. This time my question is on virtual reality first-person game mechanics. I am thinking Rift, Omni and a Delta 6 combination. Will we be able to have decoupled mechanics in FPS mode for a true immersive VR experience? Let me explain and show you what I'm thinking. As we are walking straight forward, can we look in any direction, while fire our weapon in an opposite direction? Wow, that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, well, no, no, the, the answer is yes. Uh, the, so uh, I, the implementation, like uh, some of the Rift implementations that were done on Doom and some of the other stuff uh, were not, in my mind, the best way to do the VR reputation. The, mm -hmm. the, the Oculus Rift should be about where your head's looking, where your gun is aiming should not be tied to where your head's looking. It should be tied to where you're holding it. So if you were just using a gamepad and the Rift, it would be like, you know, one of the ways is, one of the sticks would control which way your game at, which one, which way your gun aimed, and the other mm -hmm. stick would be controlling which way you walked, and then the rift would be where you're looking. If you had, you know, a, a, a gun that you could have the feedback of its direction and an omni trad, then yeah, same thing. Um, so yeah, it will definitely be decoupled. I mean, the system's set up to be decoupled. It's, I don't think it's it's just a bad interface implementation that you've seen on some early Rift stuff, which is makes the experience kind of weird because it's sort of weird for me to move my head to aim a gun if I'm in first person mode. I understand it if I'm like piloting a spaceship and that's how I'm like tagging targets, which is kind of what the Eva thing was because uh, that makes sense. That's how like I say a uh, Apache helicopter manages mm -hmm. gun, but it doesn't make sense in first person. So uh, no, it's definitely decoupled. Okay. From Kajasi says, will there be any tools to support the Star Citizen Machinima makers or will mod authors have to write them? Uh, so, uh, good question. Uh, definitely long term, yes, because um, we're going to obviously, we're 
even though there's a big open sandbox and a lot of procedural stuff, uh, story, Squadron 42, a bunch of other stuff's pretty important. Uh, and we want to have tools to do that. We've got some plans longer term for you know more sort of linear story mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I don't know if it's in the very first release because we've got a lot of stuff to do. So in the <laughs> early persistent beta stuff, you know the the level of the mod tool side stuff will be that will be you know much more limited, and then we'll be rolling that stuff out after we've got like the persistent universe running and people are playing with it. We we can start uh, you know having all the rest of the stuff all working, because there's a, there's a big suite of stuff, but so long term, yes. Yeah. Uh, short term, you may have to wait a little bit. Yeah, because when we use the mod tools internally, they're they're not real GUI interface friendly for no, everybody no, else no. out I mean, there. No, we're, we're, it's a whole bunch of like super high-end packages, right. you know, between Motion Builder, Max, uh, Maya, um, you know, the stuff we're using on the motion capture, right. um, uh, uh, in the engine itself, Sandbox, uh, Cinebox we'll be using on the CryEngine, which is that sort of film mm -hmm. side stuff. So it's not particularly uh, an easy sort of one-stop workflow, so we'll have to do some work for that. Mm -hmm. um, Long-term, that is definitely our goal. There you go. Uh, from Green Tea, are there plans to grant other players permission to fly ships in your own hangar? Uh, yes, no, definitely. So you, you know, um, we definitely, uh, if you have a bunch of ships, you should be able to have a friend of yours, same thing, the rating system that I'm talking about, fly a, sh a ship for you. And, uh, you know, I guess we'll just have to figure out there's, okay, you have a ship, and then when you land it back, it comes back to you or something. Uh, we'll have to figure out the mechanics. You wreck your, you wreck your dad's car. And yeah, we've got to figure out the mechanics if someone just doesn't take over someone else's ship. But, but, yeah, no, that's part of the plan. Cool. I think you're going to like this next video. All right. Hello, my name is Alexa. I am eight years old. I love watching my dad play video games, but I am worried that it might be too... It might be inappropriate for my age. Do you know what rating Star Citizen will have? Can you guys please make my dad stop talking about Star Citizen? It's so annoying. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's a that's creative great. video. That's great. I know. Um, so rating wise, uh, it's uh, I actually don't uh, don't know at the moment. We kind of sort of don't fall in the normal ESRB right. setup, um, but I would guess that it's going to be along the lines of freelancer and wing commander. So uh, probably not like hardcore mature. Um, so I don't know whatever we were on the wing commander games and privateer and freelancer, but it'll be along those lines. So uh, or whatever Star Wars would be. I mean, it's it's not it's. You know, it's certainly not like lots of blood and giblets and uh, all the rest of the stuff. So I would say that it's probably fairly safe for, you know, I don't know, people uh, that are eight years on all up. But we're not going to, we can't help them with their dad. We're, we we're, can't help with their dad. We're pretty no, excited. That sure. he, yeah. <laughs> good job, dad. Um, from Colt45Keller, he says, any chance of a doomsday-style device on your ship to discourage pirates and griefers with mutually assured destruction? Doomsday device, what do you think? I think that's great. I think we should do that. Bye. Ooh, and now he's gone. I hope he survived the blast. And speaking of gone, here's our very own Mark Skelton with the haziest of thoughts. So why do you think they sterilize needles for lethal injections? Hmm. Well, all right, hey, everybody, look who's here. Hi, hey. everybody. It's been a couple shows. Glad to have you on again. Thank you. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about here today. We do. You brought some goodies. I did bring a lot of goodies. So mm -hmm. what do we have here? What, what we are got these? these. What are these? <laughs> I'm not <Hey>. looking. <laughs> what do you got there? I've got the UEE. Check that right. out. Not as good as mine? No, yours are way cooler. You've got yeah, the UEE Army I and the, the Advocacy. Now, what are we going to do with these? What, what, what are these for, exactly? These are to sew on. Right. Right. That's see? that would be really really cool. Yeah, we see. And these uh, are the these are the ones we can get on the website right now. Yes, right? they are. There's five of them. I've, I've got the three here. Okay. Uh, two got stolen out, out the front. Are you serious? Yeah. Somebody walked out with them already? No. Well, they're sneaking them. I'll get them back. They're, they're sneaking them. <laughs> yeah. What'll happen is, you know, probably Travis walks in with a brand new shirt and some things on his sleeves. And you they never took know. two because when they saw my my demo. Oh, they, they yeah, 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 they wanted them. Uh, they're hoping, you know. Well, never exactly. mind. We got the red top too, yes, by the way. Yes, we do. Very so popular. Red. Thank you. And uh, we have the mouse pads at my office. 
the mouse pads. Let's talk Metal a little bit about that. I'm going to film that so that people yeah. know what that is, mm -hmm. the, how it slides across. You know, your mouse slides across the yep, mouse yep. pad because it's not it's not the cheapest item. No, no, you well, need to know that it's good. Yeah, it, well, it is. So. It, it's and it and it supports dev and it's really really cool. Mm -hmm. It's not and like it's, a it's, cool. it's not like a regular you know neoprene mouse pad. It's it's a it's no, a no, high it's a, end. It's a, it's a high very high end. Right, because we want it to last. We want people to you know to yep. walk by and go oh, what is that you yep. know and that's a very high end. It's mouse very pad. very so cool. I'll be showing off all those details really soon. You know something's coming up here pretty big. You've had a pretty big hand in something coming up. Um, yeah. Soon. I've put some special outfits on order. Shirts, Ooh, polo shirts. For? For Gamescon. Gamescon. <laughs> right. We, yes, so we have you coming. Uh, we are. I am Wind coming. Man is coming. Mm -hmm. I will be there. Yeah. Michael will be there. Obvious, Michael Morland. Obviously, the man. Mm -hmm. Chris will be the there as well. Ben. Ben. Yep. Ben. You, Ben's ben going to be there. Ride. Ben, yep. <laughs> ben scored a ride. Ben scored a ride. That's awesome. Ride. He is actually going to DragonCon right before. Right, that's right. He got an invitation to that's that. That's pretty cool. Fans yep. have invited him to come up and talk there, and he's going to get out there and do that. And our very own Rob Irving. Rob Irving. Rob was voted up the list. Channel 3. I hear you. <laughs> he was Channel 3. So, and Travis is coming, our producer from Sweet. the LA side. It's a big event. It is a big event. And we've got a thousand now, people oh my gosh. Uh, capacity. Wow. Um, so it is going to be tight on the door list. It so, is. What's now tight on the door list, We're gonna, people are going to have to RSVP. Yes, they do have to RSVP. Um, probably not be able with a one plus one. Right. Um, so subscribers and concierge will get in at 7 p.m. Um, get a little bit of Chris time. Sweet. Um, and then 8 p.m. will be everybody. Everybody come on in. Uh, citizen card holdles. 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 Citizen card. Citizen card holdles. I do that all the time, by the way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was thinking German. And I yeah, got, well, that's what I yeah. <laughs> um, They will go into a raffle for some goodies. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. goodies. very nice. Goodies. And, and so. um, Chris is going to be revealing. Revealing? Reve revealing. Chris, <laughs> is not, Chris revealing. will be very revealing. Okay. No, he's going to be revealing the he hanger is, that at night. at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Now, so. we would lo you'd love to have everybody come out there, but it's in the old train station, right? It is in the old train Which station. Which is a really cool venue. In the, it's a super cool venue. It's in the shadow of that magnificent church that's right out there. Yep. It's, um, and you guys scouted it out, right? We did. I was there uh, end of You May? went to Crytek and exactly. you said, let's go check exactly. this out. and. We did. I was a really, really cool oh, venue. It is really. I'm really looking forward to it. We're looking yep. forward to. You know, Germany is our second largest territory. That people really, it really. Is. Yeah, it and is. And I'm actually going to get somebody for German customer service support. That is yes. a good news item. <laughs> <laughs> good news for the people. It's not my first language. You know, it, it's good. Trust me. They get yep. all that. They're a big. So, they're a big part of of us. Yep. So that is happening very soon. Cool. Uh, so Gamescon's coming up. You know, got, get your RSVP in. Um, Get ready to come and, and meet it, meet the crew. Have a good time. We're gonna we're gonna show the hangar. Yes, we we're gonna will. we're gonna rub elbows and say hi to everybody there. It's mm -hmm. a it's a cool venue. It's we're also going to now. Chris is also going to. I think you're going as well to um, Gamescon itself, but 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 oh. not with not with the fans. He's in a private room with like press and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. We we couldn't really afford a. Uh... We, well, no, no. <laughs> we obviously not. Not. No. <laughs> not with not with our not without holdles. No, <laughs> not without our holdles. We have to protect our holdles. Exactly. <laughs> well, listen. That, thank you very much for stopping thank by. Thank you. Thank you it's for awesome. having me. Always great. Um, and let's not forget the wing the after show. Wing Wings hangover. Fifteen minutes after the show, you can ask questions. Tell us what you liked, what you didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you were talking to say we didn't like what you like. No, no, the way around. Come All on, right. you know that. Um, and if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hangover or Hanger, send it in. We just might use it. See you in the verse. See ya. out of the picture. We have no more suspects or clues. But I have instincts, Spike. And my instincts tell me we're getting closer. I can feel it. I can feel it like it's right 
in my neck! Run! <laughs> Three darts is too much! <laughs> What the?